Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. This is the four hour chart of the Bitcoin on Clark Moody from Mt. Gox feed. And you can see, we'll move in a little bit closer. You can see we have a very, very stable price range on low volume. So the Bitcoin seems to be stabilizing at about the 110 price. Uh, we've had some dips down. We had a dip down to 80. Had a couple of times we snuck below 100. Uh, but this seems to be very, very healthy. Uh, all the critics who have said that the Bitcoin price isn't stable, therefore it's not usable. Well, at the current price uh, stabilization uh, situation, then that obviously that criticism isn't true. And I think ultimately you're going to end up with a Bitcoin that is either just slowly rising or uh, a stable price. So... Uh, of course, that argument has always been a bogus argument because we have BitPay and others that uh, lock in the price uh, converted immediately to a currency. So that's not really a valid criticism, but a lot of people have made that. Now let's go down and look at the market depth here. Again, we've got a $5 price grouping and uh, the 1,000 lines or rows and... Our total Bitcoins, not a lot different, about 171,000. Our key 100,000 uh, break-off point is around a price of 160 now, and it's 75 on the buy side. So it's quite a bit higher than the current price on the sell side, and that's going to be a little bit bullish, uh, kind of neutral. So my take on this will be bullish to neutral if we go out to the longer term daily chart this is a very healthy consolidation this definitely does not look like a crash from a parabolic spike uh, this looks like a correction from a parabolic spike it seems to be stabilizing right about halfway of that uh, parabolic spike and again if we go out to the long-term view you can see the last one we had stabilized around 80 percent down and then came up to about 50 percent and it went for quite a while at about 50 percent of the last spike and then it finally moved into new highs so uh, we're not sure if that's what's going to happen this time but uh, for the moment the bitcoin seems very stable i don't think too many of the critics who saw it run up to 266 would have expected that it would come back down and stabilize around $110. So that's very, very encouraging. Now, before we get over to this story here on the Genesis block, and a lot of people have covered it, I really like this site. I've got it linked on the blog, and uh, we try to cover all the stories from this and all of the Bitcoin sites uh, on the blog. So, but before we do that, let's go over and look at a chart from netdania.com. Uh, you can click on the link below. This is a weekly chart of the Chinese yuan or renminbi. And that's the Chinese currency. is not a fully convertible currency. Uh, I expect that at some point within this decade, it will become a fully convertible currency. And this is the yuan against the US dollar you can see the slow and steady rise uh, back from this chart begins midway through 2007 and the way you read this is this is uh, think of it as cents on the dollar so the renminbi has risen from about 13 cents uh, on the US dollar to about 16 cents so a slow steady rise uh, you can see this period here from about July of 2008, basically the beginning of the financial crisis, although probably the Bear Stearns uh, crisis. So we're talking about June, maybe 2008, all the way to about, this is the beginning of QE2 uh, in uh, July of 2010. Now you can see that the Chinese currency just stayed steady against the dollar through this entire financial crisis and then when the money printing started again then uh, we got that 
slow rise continuing. So a lot of people have talked about the importance of uh, having a weak currency. Of course, that's the strategy that uh, many of the policymakers in the United States are pursuing or intend to pursue, uh, although they have often claimed that they believe in a strong dollar policy. Now, the thing you need to understand about a currency, a strong currency, and the Chinese currency is a strong currency right now. By the way, if we go over and look at the U.S. dollar index, we can see that uh, although it is uh, steady against all these other currencies, it's falling against the Chinese currency. So the main thing you need to understand about a currency is that a lot of the Keynesians will tell you that you want your currency to weaken and that's just simply not true. Uh, a strong currency means a strong country. Uh, it's a two-way street. Yes, you want to be able to export and uh, compete with other exporters, but uh, the best way to compete for exports is to have high quality exports. Japan proved that in the 1980s. So the strategy of devaluing your currency to uh, increase your exports, uh, that's not going to work if you don't have anything to export that's of quality, which the United States no longer has. And also if you're running a trade deficit. So the United States is pursuing the exact wrong policy as far as supporting our currency and the Chinese are pursuing the exact right policy that's not really surprising so let's go over to the Genesis block and read this China brings Bitcoin to its populace last week CCTV the predominant state television broadcaster in China aired an overview of Bitcoin explaining both how some folks have made money from the new currency and how many see it as a speculative bubble. The Chinese government, which has more than a dozen agencies regulating media and information flow, clearly wants its population to know about Bitcoin, despite the successful global use of the currency to circumvent capital controls and undermine central authority, governmental aspects China takes quite seriously. If China successfully aids the proliferation of Bitcoin, the implications on the global currency system could be monumental. Rather than having to use U.S. dollars as an intermediary currency or establish swap lines to support international trade, a world conducting trade with Bitcoin would mean